better, you'll do better. So it goes something to, it goes something to pay attention to, man. Um, I think we all pretty much familiar with the Breonna Taylor case and, you know, what happened with that young lady with the, you know, weird faulty warrant that led to her place getting searched, which led to her being murdered uh, by cops. But two more of the cops have been fired. The person who issued the warrant as well as the person, I believe, who shot her. So, um, let's listen to some OGs talk about the processes and what we need to do as people and how we got to get more justice from that case. Be sure to join our Bring the Funk fan club. Every dollar that you give to us supports our daily digital show. There's only one daily digital show out here that keeps it black and keep it real. as Roland Martin Unfiltered. Support the Roland Martin Unfiltered daily digital show by going to RolandMartinUnfiltered.com. You can make this possible. In Louisville, they're moving to try to fire two of the officers involved uh, in the shooting death of Breonna Taylor. Uh, the officer who obtained the no-knock warrant uh, and the officer who fired the fatal bullet that struck Taylor received notice this week that the police department intends to fire them. Detective Joshua James, the officer who obtained the no-knock warrant, wrote in a sworn affidavit submitted to a Jefferson County judge that led uh, that that he had that he said that he had verified through a used to post U.S. Postal Inspector that Taylor's former boyfriend had been receiving packages at her home. However, that was a lie. According to Louisville Police Chief, Detective James received the information from Sergeant Mattingly, who got it from another police officer. So you got hearsay. The police department spokesperson says the two officers have, will have the right to, to, to a pre-termination hearing before officially being fired. So basically, uh, Robert, they lied. Uh, absolutely, they lied. I think that it is a disgrace for, uh, as a nation. The fact that it takes nine months, a global uh, a global uh, social justice movement, a racial reckoning uh, to address the issues of African Americans and uh, police brutality in this country. And out of that, you get no criminal charges and you may get an officer or two fired a year later and they will still be able to get jobs in other jurisdictions. There's been no federal legislation. In the entirety of 2020, not on George Floyd, not on uh, Breonna Taylor, that has passed and been signed into law. Despite 20 cities in this country being... I'm not going to do a lot of talking on this, but just pay attention. They're just giving you updates on what's been going on. and Just listen to how long it took. Set on fires. Despite the fact we still have people marching and protesting till this day in the middle of a pandemic on the issue of racial reconciliation. America loves racism so much that it will let this country burn to the ground before addressing it. So, yes, it's a good thing for these officers to be fired. But more so, it puts uh, places in stark contrast the fact that we have to have a new civil rights act in America. These police officer, uh, officers and police jurisdictions have had a half century to catch up to and to circumvent prevent the civil rights laws that are on the books. We, uh, we should not have a, a place where the, uh, the presidential administration and the particular attorney general are in charge of determining whether or not you have constitutional rights as an African American in this country because if you have Jeff Sessions or Bill Barr in office, that means effectively there is no civil rights act in this country because there will be no enforcement mechanism for them to prosecute it. So we have to find a better way to fix these issues in America. It's far past the time. We are in a country if you didn't catch what he just said, just scroll back and re-listen to it. Right now, where no less than three separate billionaires are building their own spaceships to go to Mars. That we still can't figure out how to get a police to stop shooting black folks. We got to do something about it. It has to happen now. Not one of these will wait till we get a Senate majority in 2022. When we get the House back in 2024, first 100 days, it has to be an agenda item. And if not, there has to be hell to pay. That's right. And they about to get into as to why we got to put a quick time limit on Biden and them because Trayvon Martin happened during the Biden Obama administration. And when, if they do win, 2014, the Justice Act can actually get passed. Uh, but Dr. King wrote his book, Why We Can't Wait. Robert's right. Look, this ain't, no, we ain't waiting. It has to happen now. Yeah, absolutely. 
absolutely. But I mean, I think we cannot underscore or understate the fact that there is legislation that's already passed in the House that was actually co-sponsored and led the charge on by the Vice President elect Senator Kamala Harris. And so, you know, that's something that's a, a pretty obvious solution. If you get um, Ossoff and Warnock in there, then you don't have to rely on executive actions. You don't have to rely on the Department of Justice implementing different policies and then training and things of that nature. You can actually make it illegal to do that. One of the reasons why the Department of Justice, which by the way under bar is full of shit, but one of the reasons why they weren't charging him is because the standard is so low. The standard is only of what is reasonable. It's not what is necessary. The George Floyd Justice and Policing Act changes the standard. And then when you look at the Breonna Taylor case, that's a case where there's a person, and actually in both cases, in the Tamir Rice and the Breonna Taylor case, both of those cases involved officers who were recommended to, who were either fired from other jurisdictions or were recommended to not be hired. If the George Floyd Justice and Policing Act passed, then you would have a national database and you would avoid or be able to avoid situations like that where an officer can lie, which is why one of the Breonna Taylor officers was fired because, or, I'm sorry, uh, the Tamir Rice officer was fired because he lied on his application about, um, about prior incidents. So there are tangible solutions and there are solutions that have to be done through the law because it's just, it's the law that allows them to behave this way. But I firmly believe that um, that, that the Biden-Harris administration will take whatever kind of executive and agency action that they can to try to do something about what is going on right now. And uh, the last thing I'll say is we have to remember that the Obama administration, the Obama-Biden administration had the 21st century policing uh, task group. So they were trying to make progress on this, but you had a Republican obstructionist Congress. So it, again, goes back to Georgia. It goes back to what's in our power to do. And then we make further demands once we give our elected leaders the tools that they need. And Greg, to reach his point, one of the criticisms of Attorney Former Attorney General Eric Holder was that, that the standard was so high to pursue civil rights charges against cops, and he said only Congress can fix that. That's why, see again, this connecting the dots. That's why Old Soft Warnock matters. Uh, that's why if punk ass Cal Cunningham wasn't sitting here uh, uh, sending out damn uh, uh, signal messages and then uh, Seth Gideon loses in Maine, then you have, of course, uh, Amy McGrath who gets crushed in Kentucky, you wouldn't even let left up to uh, uh, these two races here. But this is where the dots are connected, and that's why this race matters. That is why we are here in Georgia trying trying to do all we can to make sure uh, that Osop and Warnock win to get these laws passed. Absolutely. To all my ideological, uh, ideologically pure comrades, set all that aside, we have to advance on all fronts at the same time. So, the Democrats can get all the... Look, this, this is where we come in. There's people on the street. This is where we come in. Smoke too. Tamir Rice was executed. He was executed by Timothy Lohman and Frank Garnback in 2014, as you say. That's under the Obama-Biden administration. And yes, uh, yes, the Attorney General could say, he could say his hands were tied, but that ain't necessarily true. Now, in 2019, of course, two career Justice Department folks in the Department of Justice were denied permission to use grand jury to, to use a grand jury to issue subpoenas for testimony in Tamir Rice's case, and they ran out the clock. That is absolutely Bill Barr and Donald Trump, the white nationalists. But as Reese said, what you're looking at in Louisville, Miles Cosgrove, the trigger man that killed Breonna Taylor, and Joshua James, the bogus, uh, got the bogus warrant, those guys are getting moved out of the point because a black woman, Yvette Gentry, came out of retirement. She's the police chief now, and she brought her sister with the Yolanda Baker, who's her administrative assistant, also came out of retirement. That is because of the political pressure of the people who have been in the streets. You've got to do it all together. So now we're at the point now in Georgia where... People got to turn out to vote. So folks who are saying it doesn't matter who's in office, that's a lie. Ask the police chief of Louisville. Ask whoever the attorney general is going to be so that Joe Biden and Kamala Harris might get a second bite at the apple that was slow walk during the uh, Obama administration, which is, by the way, where you got Black Lives Matter born in the streets of Ferguson. You can combine that with voting and political pressure and external pressure and these killers have to be brought to account. But it isn't a one or other strategy. We must advance it on all fronts, which is why the only thing we should be focusing on between now and January 5th is breaking the back of the white nationalist party in the United States Senate. And, and Roll, this is 
Well, one, one, break, one thing. Real, real quick, go ahead. Go ahead. Well, 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 just, just real quick, I, I do think that there has to be a contingency. We can we can't say, well, if we don't win both seats, then not, we'll be okay. Look, I'm gonna I'm gonna wrap it up right there, but man, it's stuff we can do on the ground, man, and it's just being a little political aware and then making time to vote. So let's hold these people accountable. We can do it. And I'm going to be on their neck. I'm going to be on their neck. So just, hey, ride with me. Ride with me. I'm on their neck.